is our tastic and in this video art lesson tutorial we're going to be making some poppy art and it's perfect for any remembrance day or a veterans day memorial day activities anytime that you would like to create some lovely poppy art perfect for some november uh, remembrance themes so we're going to be needing some oil pastels and some paint either uh, watercolor paint or temper paint and that's it my lovely friend so grab those art making mediums and join me and let's make some poppy art So we're going to begin our poppy artwork by grabbing ourselves a red oil pastel or a red wax crayon. I'm going to use that to draw with because it's going to allow for a resist painting. So we're going to be using one, one resist medium, which will be either oil pastel or wax crayon. And the second medium we're going to use is watercolor paints or tempera paint cakes. Whatever you have, use the mediums you got. All right, here we go. We're going to put our paper in landscape orientation and we're going to draw sort of a jelly bean shape in the center of our page. So I'm going to draw one curved line and then I'm going to add the bottom with a jelly bean sort of shape. So it just goes curved line and then we just curve it up and around. Next, we're going to add some dots to our poppy. So I'm going to have one dot the bottom and then I'm going to have one dot on each side. Next, we're going to connect some dots. So I'm going to draw one line down. I'm going to curve it in, out, around, and connect it to the top dot. I'm going to do that a second time. We're going to go out, in and back out, up, around and connect. And don't worry if they're not the same because all petals are gonna look different, especially with how they grow or the angle that they've grown in, or maybe a bug has eaten part of it. So they're always different. So don't worry if they're not the same. No two petals on a flower are ever alike. And next we're gonna draw Two more dots. We're going to draw another petal, and this time it's just going to go out and connect. We're not going to see the whole thing because it's hiding behind these other petals. We're going to do the same on the other side out, in, and connect. And finally, we're going to have two more dots. We're going to put one dot on that flower petal and one dot on the other. And we're going to draw a line that comes up, goes down, up, and connects. So that's just a guideline. So if you want to do a little quick sketch, you can. And then when you're ready to firm it up, you're going to go and trace over that guideline or draw the petal that we're only going to see the top of, right? Because the rest of it is behind these petals. Perfect, and now we got a poppy shape. So now we can go ahead and just blend out those dots by just making those other lines a little bit thicker. And you can even take your red and draw a nice little line down the center of each flower petal to give a bit of texture. And then we're gonna go ahead and draw a stem. So we're first gonna draw one straight line down to the bottom of the page. Then the next one's gonna go down out, in, and then connect to the bottom. And that way we're going to allow for a leaf on one side. And then when you're ready, you're gonna draw two dots on either side of that leaf stem part, one above the other, and then one dot way out in the space. And then we're going to connect the dots. So I'm going to draw from this dot out and up to that outer space dot. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. Nice big curvy line to the dot to make 
like a lovely leaf. And just as before, we're going to blend out those dots so we don't notice them. And then you can take your oil pastel and you can just add some leaf texture by adding some diagonal lines. And finally, you can go ahead and add any sort of background texture that you want. I sometimes like to add some different swirling lines here and there to create texture in my background. I'm just going to use the same oil pastel. Perfect. And once you're done, you're ready to paint. So we're going to grab our water and a paintbrush. We're going to swirl, swirl, swirl in our red paint first. And we're going to paint our poppy. So we're going to paint the lead, the petals of the flower first. Nice, beautiful red. And as we paint, we'll notice that the oil pastel does a pretty good job of helping keep all the paint in its spot. And don't worry if you accidentally go above or beyond those lines. It just adds to the texture after all. And lets our viewers know that it wasn't printed off a computer but was made by a person. Next, I'm going to paint the center of my poppy with a black. But if you don't have black, you can certainly do green. Or perhaps the green is more commonly used where you are, and therefore you might use it for that reason. I'm also going to take green and I'm going to paint my stem my leaf with my lovely green and finally I'm also going to take my green and I'm going to draw some swirling lines not this time with an oil pastel but with my paint over top of the lovely oil pastel and this is going to add another layer of texture but it's not going to take away from my poppy because red and green are contrasting colors so it'll stand out no matter what because they are on the opposite end of the color wheel from each other they're high contrasting colors and I have of course that black in the center there so when my viewer looks at my artwork they're going to look at the black first in that big red bold area and then their eyes will move around the background with all that painted line movement. Perfect and if you would like to go ahead and add a little bit more black to make sure that stands out you can do that. You can also if you want to try you can add a little dot of black at the bottom of, or top of that stem just underneath where the petal is and you can even add a little bit on the bottom half of your leaf for a little bit of shading, just like that. Hi there, thank you so much for watching the art lesson. Now let's dive into some more ways that you can explore Ms. Artastic art lessons. First place to start is the Ms. Artastic blog. Here it's kind of like a hub for all things Ms. Artastic. You're going to find links to the podcast where you can find my show notes and listen. Um, or you can find the podcast on your favorite podcast player. Just search Ms. Artastic. You're going to find teaching strategies and resources, free printables, art lessons for kids from the elements of art, principles, principles of design, seasonal art lesson ideas, and holiday art lesson ideas, some of the more popular holidays. But you can find so much more. So it gives you a great place to start. You can find some free lessons by clicking the number one button. And then you can learn a bit about me and find all my blog posts. 
that cover things from back to school, advice for new art teachers, um, talking about the principles of design and how to teach them, tips for teaching visual art to kids, and so much more. Lots of freebies to discover, and this is the Ms. Artastic blog, so make sure you go to MsArtastic.com as this is your first place to start on your Ms. Artastic journey. The next place to go to is the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers Store. You can search Ms. Artastic in the search bar up at the top and then you can find my store and my lovely gold cat logo here and this is a great place to start to find amazing art resources. As you can see, there is over 800 different resources to discover um, and over here we have our custom categories so if you don't want to use the search bar, which you could totally search my store over here. But if you don't want to, or if it's a little bit too complicated, you can always find different custom categories to get some inspiration for things you might want to find, like art sub resources, my artivity books that I've created, artists and art history, back to school, elements of art, directed drawing, principles of design, our world, primary art lessons, my roll and draw series, oh yeah, social emotional learning, and of course all of the holidays are in here from Halloween to Earth Day, end of year Easter, St. Patrick's Day spring, and so much more. Um, some of the cool things you might find are elements of art workbooks, I got principles of design workbooks, and so much art history guys. I have gone to town this year and created a lot of art history so you'll find art history workbooks. Um, there's a couple, there's a few different ones. This one is um, modern art history. You'll find Gustav Klimt, um, Georges Seurat, we'll have Alma Woodsy Thomas, Emily Carr, and so much more. In the first one there is artists such as Frida Kahlo, Georgia O'Keeffe, Jean-Michel Basquiat, Salvador Dali, um, and then I also have Western art history from 1900s to 1990s. So this is a modern art history workbook that goes through all the different modern art history movements from data to surrealism to abstract expressionism to early 20th century art. And I also have a art history, history of Western art, um, prehistoric to 1990s. So from ancient Greece to um, to Egyptian art, uh, romanticism, all of that you will find in prehistoric to 1990s, um, but all designed for kids. So you can check it out. I have different levels, primary um, levels through to middle school of all my different resources. You'll find them at the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers Store. Again, go to Ms. Artastic on TPT. And finally, if you are somebody who wants to dive deep into art and you need a bigger solution. So maybe not just a single solution where you have just a couple of resources, but maybe you need something bigger, a full program that's going to guide you through planning an entire year, provide all the resources for doing that, all the year long plans, all the lesson plan templates, but then also teach you how to plan the year from your back to school to your first week, um, through classroom management and assessment, um, all the way through planning your entire year till the end of the year, setting yourself up with a year A and a year B so you have a rotating curriculum, so you're planning, you're spending less time planning and more time on things you love, like your passions, your family, your fur babies, whatever it might be, um, then you need to check out the Artastic Collective art curriculum. It is my art curriculum designed for art educators. So not only am I going to give you my three-phase proven process for planning an entire year in my art teacher growth course, I'm also going to give you all the resources for the planning part, but also all the lessons as well, whether it's community builders, first week activities, when you're done, um, everything will be included. And as bonuses, you're going to get monthly art teacher challenges and you're going to get a community form that's for all the members of the Artastic Collective to talk on and collaborate together with. And then also I'll be there and you'll get a direct line to me. I will help you anytime you need my support. So this is ArtasticCollective.com and here you're going to find again my art curriculum and other programs for art educators. You can learn about me here. But my friend, this is where you're going to transform. And you can learn more by going to uh, the art curriculum area and there I will walk you through. Enrollment opens every August and 
January of every year. It is the ultimate art curriculum for our educators and I want to help you through that process of planning. I'm going to make sure that I provide you with all the resources that you need to become the best educator that you can be. And if it's not August or January, then unfortunately you can't join, but you can always get on the wait list and that way you can get the art curriculum that you need to be confident and fully planned without the stress. It is designed for educators and it's gonna again help you go from stressed and overwhelmed to calm, happy, and fully planned. So make sure you go to artasticcollective.com right now. Get on the wait list if you are needing a full art curriculum to solve your planning needs. And I will see you next time.